Thanks for coming out. And um, so just to get started, we're going to open up with prayer. If you guys would all do me a favor and just stand up. And thank you for being here. We are so happy to see you guys. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we just come to you today. We thank you so much for who you are and for all that you have done for us. Lord, we just pray that you would have your way in this house today. Lord, I pray that you would anoint everything that's done and make it according to your will, Lord. And I just pray that no matter what we do or say, that it all glorifies you, Lord. Have your way and help us to have a great day in your house. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'll remain standing. Amen, guys. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Are you excited to worship with the kids this morning? Okay, so I want all of our kids that came to VBS or any other kids that are here to come down here. And I want all of our VBS volunteers right down here. So come on up, guys. Come on. So worship, if you have not been to VBS this week, it may look a little different. 
But that's okay, because we're worshiping one God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So please worship with the kids. All right, guys. Let's go drum it. Oh, come on, volunteers. Don't be shy. <laughs> All right, you guys, please feel free to do the motions with us, okay? March. to the next one. This is marching on. We're marching on in the Lord's army. Amen? Right? All right. Praise is the mind of the darkness of how great and how mighty our God is. For the battle belongs to the Lord and no one else. Good 
job. Marching on. All right, we're going to clap. talking about doesn't matter how big your giant is right he's not too big for our God see the promised land though there's pain within the plan there you go Reach up high. Every giant will fall. Mountains will move. Every chain of the past is broken in two. Overthrown all the lies. The singing is true. Nothing is impossible. Okay, so thank you, music team. Let's hear it for our music team. They did an absolutely fantastic job this week, as did all of our volunteers. Um, we had um, over 70 volunteers every night. That's amazing, right? <laughs> That's a lot. 
Um, and they all did such a great job. And we had about 70 kids every night, too. So that's even, that's really good, too. So we are excited. We're glad that a lot of you are here this morning. Um, so each night we did offering a little different than we usually do in what we call big church. <laughs> um, we have the kids and the adults come to the front and put their offering. We were doing just one plate in the front, and then that kept getting overflowed, right? That's great. <laughs> it kept getting overflowed, so we ended up having to go to a bucket, <laughs> and that was getting pretty full. It was getting about halfway full, I guess. And anyway, we ended up raising over $1,000 at VBS this year. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That was awesome. So um, we're going to go ahead and follow suit and still do offering the same way. So we're going to ask you to bring your offering up to the front when it's time. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you know, the big people in big church, bigger, old, not bigger, like, you know, the adults, <laughs> I should say. If you don't feel comfortable, just grab a kid and tell them, hey, will you take this up there for me? Okay, so you can you can let one of, someone else do it for you if you want. Um, but I did want to tell you, the reason... We did the offering, well, obvious reasons was to help out the expenses that come along with VBS because we did a ton of things. We did three nights of VBS. Then yesterday we did a mud run in the morning. We did a family cookout right after that. And we did a B-Shock concert last night. Who was here for the B-Shock concert? That was fun, wasn't it? Like it was a lot of fun. We had a fun day yesterday. All of these things, as you know, cost money. So we were just trying to do what we could to, um, you know, bring in some offering to help out with that. And we made it a little incentive, too. So we had several leaders that we chose that got, you know, if the kids reached a certain goal, they got to put a pie in their face, which is a lot of fun. The kids had fun with that. The adults did, too, I think. So when we reached the first goal, it was me, <laughs> which they reached in the first night very quickly. I, I don't know how to feel about that. Um, but then it was Miss Cindy. Miss Cindy, wave your hand. And Miss Cindy, that we reached that goal the second night. And then it was Miss Brandy. Where's Miss Brandy? I know she's here. Oh, I thought she was here. Anyway, I haven't seen her yet. But Miss Brandy was next. And then Mr. Charlie, which everybody was excited to reach that goal. And then, of course, our beloved Pastor Brian at the very top. And so when we got to $1,000, we we were able to pie him. So everybody on our list got a pie in the face. And they did it so graciously. And we're so thankful for that, um, for leaders that don't mind just, you know, doing whatever it takes to get the kids involved. And so uh, we think overall the kids had a fun time. The leaders had a fun time. So now we're going to let you enjoy some of the fun that we did by giving our offering a little bit different. You guys in? You guys ready? Okay. So go ahead and get your offering ready. And we're going to do it in sections, so you can't all race up here at the same time, okay? Because then we might get hurt. We might have some traffic jams, and we don't want that, okay? So if you need offering, go ahead and get offering, and, um, and we'll, uh, we'll collect that. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Don't forget, listen, you can give a, a VBS offering if you want, but make sure you give God's money first. Tithes first, his money, that's his money. That's not your money to give anyway. So then if you have an offering to give to help out with the VBS expenses, go ahead and throw it in there too, okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to do offering, okay? Dear Lord, we come to you, and thank you for this great VBS that you've allowed us to have and all that you have provided so that we could have all the things that we needed for this VBS um, money-wise. Lord, I just pray that you would just bless each one that's going to give today in this offering who has given in the offerings this week already. Lord, I pray that you would just throw buckets of blessings in their lap, Lord. And Lord, I pray today that you would bless each person that has to give and even the ones that don't have to give. If anyone who's maybe even exhausted their money this week, Lord, I pray that you would just restore and give back and give them all that they need going forward in this week. Lord, and I just thank you for all you've given us. Lord, bless this offering. Let it go to do the work that you intend it to do. And we'll be so grateful for you for all that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's see. Who are we going to have to go first? Let's do this section first. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three, Go. Thank you. Isn't that so much fun? That's so much fun. All right, anyone else? Anyone else on this side? 
Um, okay, we're gonna go to this side. You ready? Go! Isn't that great? That's amazing. <laughs> I know they're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm sorry. We just do things a little bit different. Um, do you want me to have someone bring this to you, or do you guys want to come get it? <laughs> you can come get it if you want. Let's hear it for our ushers. <laughs> you just didn't know it, but we were giving you a break today. <laughs> we like to give people a break. Yeah, it's no problem. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I, I don't know. There might be stuff in there. Um, is it my turn already? Is this my turn? <laughs> I, I, made, I made the order of service, and I can't remember if it's my turn. Isn't that crazy? I think so, though. I think it's my turn. Yeah, okay. I got the head nod. I'll get up here, though. <laughs> Told you and kids we do things a little bit different, right? Okay, so um, I was telling you about some of the cool things that happened in BBS, so we're going to kind of tie in our message today along with some of the cool things that happened this week, okay? Is that okay with you guys? It's all good. I don't know about you, but the songs, those songs are powerful. And I know it was, you know, maybe a little distracting because we were doing kids stuff. And they're up here and they're having fun dancing and stuff. But the words, was anyone taking in the words of those songs? Every giant will fall. Do you have giants in your life? We all have giants in our life. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, you know, marching on. Like, I'm in the Lord's army. We are part of a massive army and because we are part of God's army we win so anyway it there's just some fantastic things wrapped in those songs that ha- we've been repeating and doing all week and it's like if you let that get into your into your spirit wow wow amazing so like I said we had um we had uh se- about 70 kids and 70 volunteers every night we had a big busy day yesterday um, at the B Shop concert last night. I don't know if this is all in order, <laughs> but we aren't you glad that we have a great AV team? <laughs> they are amazing. <laughs> They've been working super hard, making sure everything happens this week, and especially with working with B Shop last night, so that we could have everything set up. Like the setup was amazing, and they did a good job. So, but um, we had. 28 people get saved last night. <laughs> so that in itself, we could, we, we could be done right now, and that would be the best, and we, it would be good. But, you know, we're not done. Maybe there's more people. <laughs> but anyway, and it says kids, but I think there was a few adults in, the, in that number. I think they said youth, but I think there was a couple of adults. So anyway, regardless, that was amazing that so many people um, gave their heart to Jesus last night, wasn't it? That's amazing. Thank you, Lord. Um, so that's really, I got to put my glasses on. Sorry. Can't see anything really close up. Um, so, um, where's Bobby? I know he's here. Where's my, where's my friend Bobby? Isn't he here today, Miss Gillette? Can you stand up for a second? I want, I want the, 
I want um, everyone to take a close look at this. He drew this. Is that amazing? Yeah, let's hear it for Bobby. And I, I believe, is it okay if I share that? I believe that he's actually legally blind. And look at what he can do. Look what God gives him the ability to do. Thank you, Bobby, for that. That is amazing. Yeah, when he showed it to me, I was like, oh, my goodness, how awesome is that? Um, and, of course, um, we, you know, we had to make sure to, we tried, we were going to try to work it into our display, and we just, things, we just, things were going too fast, and we didn't get a chance to, so we're sorry we didn't get a chance to move that in to everything that we were doing, but we definitely are going to hold on to that. We will be using that. But anyway, great job. Um, okay, so, um, we, one other thing, um, we're going to be having cake and punch at the end of this this time together, which is awesome, right? When you do a celebration, it's always fun to have cake and punch afterwards, right? If you do a graduation or a birthday or something, that's what's involved. Um, but the cool thing is, is Sandy Edwards' dad donated the cake. Isn't that amazing? We're excited. And you'll have, next week when we do the, when Miss Tiffany gets our slideshow together, you'll be able to see the pictures, but it's not just a regular cake. They actually put the call of duty or called to duty logo on the cake so it's personalized and it says hope chapel on it too so it wasn't just an ordinary cake it was a special cake is that cool yeah i think that's cool all right so um our key key verse this week has been john 20 21 and it was talking about how jesus said Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And that's why we use the phrase called to duty. Jesus was called to duty, and we are also called to duty because he sends us. Just as he was sent, he is sending us. Um, and then, you know, when Charlie and I were talking about this theme and how it was going to, you know, come together, he said, we are all called to duty. If we weren't, why would God give us armor? Something to think about, right? The Bible does tell us to put on our armor, right? You know, and so if you think about all the spiritual battles that you face on a given day, if you are wearing your armor, you're protected from those. And then they don't get to the places that cause us to lose sleep and have fear and have anxiety and things like that. So keep your armor on. Put your armor on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the first night we talked about Joshua. We talked about Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. And our main point was that Joshua followed his marching orders. And the cool thing about that is that it was very specific. You guys remember that story, right? You march, you do this. Okay, what kid wants to come and tell me a little bit about Joshua? Joshua, how about you come up? You're Joshua, right? Let's hear it for Joshua. Do you want to tell me a couple of things that you learned about Joshua? Go ahead. I do not remember. <laughs> Joshua doesn't remember. Okay, well, thank you for being honest. Um, oh, Caleb, I bet, you, I bet you he does. Come on, Caleb. Caleb and his family? Come on, let's hear it for Caleb. All right, so Caleb's going to tell us a little bit. God's marching orders to Joshua was to march around seven days. Seven days they would march around the city. Six days they would only march around once. The seventh day they would have to march around seven times, I think. And then they all shouted. And I forgot to say that they were all quiet during those six days. And then on the seventh day, they were able to shout, and the walls came tumbling down. Well, actually, they fell flat on the ground. Very good. Let's hear it for Caleb. <laughs> um, so, 
<laughs> that's, and that's basically the reason you follow your marching orders is because if you do it God's way, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have victory, right? And, <laughs> and so I forgot to, to do this part, which because now that he gave such a great um, overview of that Bible story, we have to let you know who our Bible leaders were this week. So if uh, Major McDaniel and Miss Juliet will stand up, you don't have to come up. I'm not going to make you come up, but would you please stand? These were our Bible leaders this week, and they did an amazing job. Um, the kids were so just into what they were saying, had all kinds of visuals and everything. It was great. It was great. If you were here, you know that. If you weren't here, you missed it, but you're going to see a slideshow next week, and you'll be able to see some of that in action. Um, if you were a VBS volunteer this week, would you do me a favor and stand? I want to show everybody who our volunteers were, all of our volunteers. Yeah, they earned those applauses. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Um, yeah, because they committed. They committed, and they were here. It was long hours. It was a lot of work, and they still did it anyway. We're so thankful. <laughs> so thankful. Okay, so um, another thing that... Um, we, can, we learned from Joshua is that you have to have decided that you're part of that army to be able to be, you know, follow your marching orders. You can only follow marching orders if you're actually part of that army. Otherwise, it's pointless, right? So we talked to the kids about making sure they were part of that army, of God's army, and then they could ha follow those marching orders. Um, the second night, we talked about David. Who's gonna Who's gonna help me with David? And David's David's um, main idea was that it doesn't matter how small you are, right? Addy, do you want to come up and talk about David? Come on up. So our main idea that night is it did, doesn't matter how small you are or young. David was young and he was small, but Addy's gonna tell us some. Cause let's hear it for Addy. So how uh, Daniel defeated Goliath, so, um, yeah, David beat Goliath was, so he, so, That's okay, she can go. so Goliath, he was coming towards um, David, and David did not, he didn't just, like, stand there and wait or back away. He, he ran towards Goliath. And then he swung his sling around, and then at the right time, he, he threw the stone out of his um, sling, and then it hit him in the middle of the forehead. And then he fell on his face. He took, so he took the sword, and he cut Goliath's head off, and he gave it to the king. <laughs> Let's hear it for Addie. <laughs> I just, I, I just feel like we just can't leave that part of the story out. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, okay, you're done. Don't, don't just, don't just knock the Goliath, don't just knock the giant down. Take him out. <laughs> right? If you've got giants in your life, don't just knock them down. Take them out. <laughs> Finish the job. <laughs> they need to go away, and they need to stay away and be gone for good. All right. That's good, Addie. Thank you. So um, there's, you know, when we were um, looking at, you know, it doesn't matter how small or young you are, um, we know that David always gave glory to God. I mean, that's obvious. We all know that. David says, I'm not coming in my own strength. I'm coming in the one who sent me, you know, God, God's strength. And so, and he was, because David was standing up for God because he's like, you are defying, you know, you're defying our God. We're not going to take that. And the other people were, the other soldiers were scared. So David's like, I'll do it. <laughs> um, so anyway, as you know, this is a very common story and took down Goliath and that's great. But so what we want the kids to understand is that it doesn't matter how young they are or, or small that they are, that God can use them. And, um, in fact, 
Addie, it's just funny that she happened to be the one that came up to talk to talk us to us about this. But she asked me one night at BBS, she's like, well, I would like to help with the kids, the younger kids than her, right? And then she's like, oh, but I'm probably too small. And I was like, no, what did we learn? We learned that you're never too young, you're never too small. And so she's going to start helping with our babies. Isn't that cool? Yeah, she has a desire to serve the Lord. And when someone has a desire to serve the Lord, why not give them an opportunity to serve the Lord, right? Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's really cool. We are excited. Um, all of these kids are great. I'm going to try to tell on as many as I can. Um, so <laughs> we also, as I was, I was alluding to the giant thing, um, just as we were talking about David taking out Goliath, David took out his giant that he was facing. You know, we can take out giants in our life as well. And we asked the kids what are some of the giants that they face, you know, like fear and, you know, getting into trouble and not doing the right thing. And they all kind of came up with some good ideas on things that they face that are just a little too difficult for them. And so we told them that with the help of the Holy Spirit inside of them, that they can overcome these giants. And so each night we tried to give them a little bit of something that they could take into their spirit and just use to live for God. And so they were really excited about that. For the most part, they all did great and listened really good. And so we were, we were very proud. Now, the next night we talked about Gideon. Um, and Gideon, Gideon's main point was, it doesn't matter how small your army is. All right, so this is Gideon. He didn't even think any, he was anything special, but God chose him, sent an angel to him and told him, you're going to go and you're going to fight this big army. And Gideon was probably a little taken back by that. So he, had, he assembled an army, but you know what God told him? You got too many. He said, whoa, wait a minute, we're fighting a big army. We need a lot of people. No, you don't. Tell them if they're afraid, send some home, and they took a lot of them left, right? We, I don't know the exact number, but I think it was they started with 32,000, and then 22,000 of them left because they were afraid, right? And then that only left 10,000. Now they're going to, to face the, the huge Midianite army, and he's like, okay, well, maybe we'll figure it out, right? Okay? And then he's like, you still have too many. What? <laughs> okay. So he told them then they had to go down to the water and they had to either drink the water with just their mouth or they had to pick it up with their hand and put it in their mouth. And whichever one, do you remember which one? Is it the one that picks it in their mouth? Those are the ones that went home, right? No, those are the ones you keep. Okay, so <laughs> these, I always get confused on that part. But anyway, um, so yeah, he ended up only having 300 Yikes! <laughs> you would think that was bad, right? But we already know. We had God on our side, right? So when we got God on our side, it's no big deal. So no problem. Um, and then through a series of questions and doubts that, you know, Gideon's like, okay, well, if you really want me to go fight, I'm going to put this fleece out. And he did this a few times. No big deal. But anyway, come to find out, he ended up going, right? And God gave him a plan as well. And the plan was you got to go and you got to do this. Do you know they didn't even have to fight they just had to make noise. <laughs> I mean, these, you guys, you're just not, you just don't understand. The Bible is full of these crazy things, like how God does things, right? Um, but the whole idea when I asked Major McDaniel to help out is because he was in the military. Also, Miss Gillette was as well, I think, right? Yeah. And so because they were in the military, I wanted them to come from a military strategy point of view. Like this is not anything that the military would use. They would not send 300 men to fight this vast army. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. And so, but with God, we do things a little different because God is powerful. And no matter what odds are stacked against you, no matter how outnumbered you seem to be, God's always going to make a way, right? Okay, so, so we learned that even though Gideon was outnumbered, um, God gave him the victory in a strange way, but yet it was still the victory. So it was awesome. Um, and then we tied that into how they were all important because Gideon didn't think that he was very important. Um, but God chose him to do this thing. And we talked about the story of the lost sheep on how Jesus would leave the 99 to go get the little lost sheep. And we talked about how no matter which one of them 
if they were lost, God was going to come get them because they were important to God. And so we wanted to make sure that they knew that they were special to somebody. You know, they may not feel like they're special to anybody else, but they know that they are special in God's eyes. And then last night before the B-Shot concert, we, um, since we were doing a night of praise, we were talking about how um, praise brings the victory. Okay, and so the story there was the story of King Jehoshaphat and how he heard, he got, he got word there was an army coming. Not just an army, but an army that had allied with a lot of different armies. There were several armies joined together and they were coming. And not only that they were coming, but they were coming and they were coming close quickly. They were already getting there quick, right? And so um, what happened then King Jehoshaphat, even though he was afraid, he got afraid. I would be afraid too. That's bad news. If we get bad news, sometimes don't we get fearful? I get fearful sometimes when I get bad news, but you're not supposed to get fearful over bad news. We go to God. So that's what he did. The king went to the Lord and he prayed. He called for a fast and then he gathered the people together. And while they were gathered together, somebody spoke up and said, the Lord says, don't worry, don't be afraid. God's got this. It's his battle, not yours. He's going to give you the victory. All you have to do is stand still, hold your position. I think that's an army term or some kind of term. Yeah, (laughs) I use the military term. Um, (laughs) I tried to do that a few times, but I'm not really good about that stuff. But anyway, so he did. Then he commanded some people to go out in front of the army to praise the Lord, to sing. He got the singers together. He got the singers together, right, Miss Mandy? got the singers together and sent them out and they started praising as soon as they started praising the Lord. Those armies, again, turned on themselves, killed killed their own selves. They didn't need us to kill them. They killed themselves. And so none of them were left, the Bible says. They're all done. Isn't that awesome? Praise was the thing that brought that into, into be because it was as soon as they started praising that happened. And so if there's any kind of battle that you're facing, you have to remember we have a powerful weapon, praise. Think about Paul and Silas. You remember them when they were thrown into prison? What were they doing when the earthquake came? They were praising the Lord. They had been beaten wrongfully. They didn't even do anything. Well, I guess they did something sort of wrong according to the Roman government, but everything was wrong according to Christians back then. So, well, with the Christians, they didn't like anything that we did. Um, Anyway, they were thrown in prison. They had been beaten. They should have had every reason to not be happy and to think, wow, this is so awful. Why are we going through this? Have you ever heard a Christian be so down and sad about things? I can't believe my life is such a wreck. I'm going through something so terrible. Where is God? Why, Why has he left me? Why isn't he taking care of me? Paul and Silas are a good example for us. Now, I'm not saying that I've done that. I've done, I have done that. I have been taking the focus and looking on my problems and not looking at Jesus. Paul and Silas turned their attention to Jesus, and they were praising the Lord in that, in that bad circumstance that they were in. They were praising him. They were, they were singing they, in the middle of the night, Right? I don't know about you, but I've never woke up in the middle of the night and just started singing in my despair. (laughs) Probably need to, probably should. But Paul and Silas did that. Earthquake came. Everyone got through. You you guys know the rest of that story, most of you guys. It was a great story. If you don't know about it, go read about Paul and Silas. Praise brought that on. The praise that they were given to the Lord brought that to be. Praise is a powerful weapon. Don't forget that. Some other weapons that we have. Hey, I didn't use my notes for a long time. <laughs> okay, other, other weapons. Prayer. Miss Peggy leads our intercessors. I'm so thankful that we have a prayer team at church. I'm so thankful that I have people in my life who pray for me and for the different things that we do. Um, prayer, that's a big one. The word, the word of God, that's another big one. Which, speaking of, 
um, if you have kids, we have um, Awana starting. We have a kickoff this Wednesday. And the reason I bring that up is because Awana is heavy in learning the word. And we've already started doing some of that. We've started the, with the kids memorizing verses, which I think is amazing. They're doing an, a great job. We're giving them a Bible verse a week, and we're having them memorize those verses. And they're, they're coming back, and they're reciting them to us. It's really cool. Um, but Awana program is very heavy in Bible memorization, learning the word. And that is a powerful weapon. That is a, something that is powerful, that you have as a soldier of Jesus that you have in your arsenal to use. So we've got praise, we've got prayer, and we've got the word. And we also have fasting. No one likes to talk about that. That's hard. We like our food. Um, solitude. We don't like to do that either. We like to stay busy all the time. Slow down and get away with the Lord for a little bit. Let him rest. Rest your body and your soul and your mind and your spirit. And fellowship. But you guys are all here today, so you know the importance of fellowship, right? And, <clears throat> you know, fellowship's really important. In, in fact, don't forget to turn in your little pieces of paper for our Wednesday night meal. If you haven't done that, make sure you turn those papers in. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's a little piece of paper. Yes. Thank you, Miss Virginia. She's holding it up. If you haven't turned that in, that's for Wednesday night so that we can kind of get of an idea of how many people are going to eat with us on Wednesday so we don't prepare not enough food or too much food, okay? But that's a new program that we're starting here at Hope Chapel to make it easier on our Hope Chapel family to come together and fellowship so that you don't have to worry about dinner and, like, getting off of work and whatever, rushing, 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 and then not having time to get to church because you can't get everything done and cook dinner too. So let us do that for you, and then you guys just go ahead and come, eat some food, and you'll be here for Bible study. Sounds great, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, also in relation to coming to church and fellowshipping with believers, you know, um, church should feel like home, not a combat zone. Since this is a military VBS, I thought it might be a good idea to talk about how sometimes we can unleash friendly fire on people who are on our same team, and we don't need to do that. You know, sometimes we are the recipient of it, and sometimes we are the giver of it. And if church should feel like home, not a combat zone, let us not take part in that. Let us make sure that we are the reason why people want to come fellowship for Jesus, obviously, that's the number one reason. But we don't want to distract anyone or de deter anyone from coming. And if you aren't nice and you don't make them feel like they're loved or welcome here and they don't come, then we can't fellowship. So do your part. Do your part to help make this feel like home for people that come. Okay? All right. <laughs> that's important. And... Those weapons we just talked about, make sure that you know how to use those weapons because it's useless if you don't and sometimes even dangerous. If you have a weapon and you don't know how to use it, it can be very dangerous. Have you ever heard someone misuse the word of God? I mean, have you ever seen, do you remember in the Bible where Jesus criticized the, criticized the Pharisees because they were fasting, they were doing the right thing, but they wanted everybody to know how great they were. That was not the, using that right, the right way, right? So just make sure these weapons that we're using, we're using the right way, right? And, um, and God will bless us and, and be, we will be part of the solution, not the problem. That's good, right? And then we come to today's celebration which is our VBS celebration day, but it's also what we are calling our cadet graduation. Okay, so basically we're just talking about, because we've been talking about military theme VBS this week, we're talking about we've been in like, what's, what you say, boot camp? Oh, and by the way, <laughs> if you don't know, um, we had a station, a boot camp station, and we were making, we, we had this uh, Camp Gladiator instructor that was helping us out this week. And also my daughter helped her, Chelsea, wave your hand. Um, and they worked those kids 
hard. <laughs> they worked those kids good. They were doing push-ups and sit-ups and mountain climbers and jumping jacks. And, I mean, it was working them. Um, I think they were doing, I don't know, they were doing a lot of physical exercise because we were trying to make the, I, you know, kind of make the connection with the kids that it's good for us to, to feed all of the parts of our body. We need good exercise and nutrition because that helps our brain and our body to work properly. So it's not all spiritual. We have physical elements that we have to do to take care of our bodies that God has given us. So they have the longevity to keep going and fight in these battles that we face, spiritually, mentally, and physically. All of it works together. And so it was just really good. We had a, we had a lot involved um, where, you know, we wanted to make sure the kids felt all of that. So that's why today is a graduation day. Because we want to say, hey, kids, you guys did great. You showed up. You learned stuff. And you followed directions. You learned how to... Um, whatever <laughs> Major, McDaniel, Ma Major McDaniel will call them to attention or something in a minute, but <clears throat> I don't know anything about that, but he does. And, but they've learned a lot of really good things this week. So um, when we talk about heaven, um, let's go ahead and uh, do the, the um, Matthew passage. <clears throat> and um, our... When we talk about graduation, celebration, the main thing that we're, we're talking about is our final graduation, heaven being our final graduation. And so our scripture for today is Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, and you can read along with me. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go, up, go out to meet him. Then all, the vir all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there not, should not be enough for us and you, but go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you do not know, neither know, you do not know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So one of the things that I learned in studying for this VBS is that readiness is the top priority of the U.S. Army. Probably all the branches of military. Um, but in the notes that I have, it says specifically that one. Um, in fact, this comes out of a book. Uh, speaking of, a book that I got that I was using for this is called The Military Guide to Armageddon. There are rarely times when I recommend a book outside of the Bible for all Christians to read. But this is a book that I would highly recommend all Christians to read. Because it's preparing yourself for the end times. And there is so much good stuff in there. I would highly recommend that you read that. So if you need more information on that, see me after church, and I'll make sure to give you that information. Um, so one of the quotes out of, or one of the passages out of that says, the number one priority of the U.S. Army is being battle ready. No other priority comes close. Readiness means to be prepared to fight any conflict, anytime, anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. And so, and even having a conversation with Major McDaniel, um, one day he said that there were, um, he had two bags that he always had ready to go. And one bag was like, you know, because he said once you get a call, you would have, you might have one, only one hour to be wherever you need to go. And you didn't know how long you were going and when you would be back. And so that's being ready. That's being battle ready. That's being like alert and ready to go whenever you're needed to go. You know, 
that's the reason why I think that this passage of scripture is so important because, you know, you won't have time to prepare once it gets past a certain point. You only have now to prepare. Now is the time to prepare for Jesus is coming and he's coming soon and he's coming quick. And, you know, you can tell the signs all around us. And I know sometimes we hear those words a lot and people are like, yeah, but people have been saying that forever. Well, do you want to be like the wise or the foolish? I want to be like the wise. I want to make sure I'm ready, whether it happens in my lifetime or not, which all, you know, information seems to lead that it's going to come this lifetime. Um, So basically, there are some things that keeps us from being ready. And you probably know some of them. Being busy, being too busy. Is anyone busy? I'm busy. I, I, I do not like being busy. Um, but, you know, Jesus says we're supposed to be busy about the Father's business. Okay, so that's fine. We just need to make sure that what we're busy about is the Father's business. You know, we don't want to be busy for the sake of being busy. Another huge one, this is probably the biggest one, is distractions. Anybody have any distractions in your life? Um distractions will keep you from being ready. Um, I was listening to a message by um, someone on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and um, one of the things that he said is, don't be a flashlight, be a laser beam. And he was equating that to the concentration that it takes for us to manage our priorities in a way that we are doing what God intends us to do and not doing things that God doesn't intend us to do that are keeping us too busy from being able to pay attention and being ready for him either to use or being ready when it's time for us to go. So we have to be ready. Um, And then... He, basically what he says is it go, you go from focus to concentration to elimination. So you start by focusing. And, and Miss Tiffany probably could do a better illustration on this than I can because, you know, she's a photographer and an excellent one at that. So is Miss Catherine. Well, she, she stepped out for a minute. Um, but, you know, you got to start focusing in on the things that are really important, those things that God really wants you to focus on. You concentrate, which means you're going to pull in a little bit tighter. And then the things that are outside of that, you have, to start, you have to start letting go. We don't do good at letting go. You know, not every good thing is something that we should be doing. It may be a good thing for somebody else to do. It may be a good thing that needs to be done, but every good thing is not our responsibility. God has a call and a plan for each one of us. And... We are the ones that need to listen to God, what he tells us to do, and do that. Be that laser beam. Focus in directly on what God is telling you to do. Okay? That's hard. That's hard because we we like to do a lot of good stuff. But we need to do that thing or even those couple of things that God wants us to do so we can be most productive and effective. All right, and then another scripture that we're going to read, and this is where it gets exciting. We're going to do the um, John 14, 1. Um, So I was thinking about this. When we were talking about um, heaven one day, I looked at Charlie and I said, why does it seem that we only talk about heaven at funerals? I don't hear a lot of talk about heaven. People aren't just talking about heaven all the time. I don't hear a lot of people talking about heaven. Why not? Heaven is amazing. It is our final destination. It is our hope fulfilled. It is what we are longing for and waiting for, you know, when when God is done with us here on this earth. You know, I like what Bishop said last night. For those of you who were here, he was like, this is our earth suit carrying our the, our person inside from place to place until we no longer need our earth suit. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good, um, you know, me being a kid person, I identified with that a little bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, we should be looking forward to heaven. We should be excited. Have you ever, I don't know, maybe some of you guys are too young for this, but like go back to some of the older gospel songs. I was sending some to Mandy, Miss Mandy. Um, there are some old gospel songs that if you listen to, you'll get excited about heaven. <laughs> they are just like 
there's just something about some of those songs that just, I'll fly away. How many of you guys know that song? I'll fly away. That is amazing. That will get you so excited to go. You'll be ready to fly now. In fact, Charlie's funny sometimes. You know, if I'm aggravating him, he'll say, you better watch out. Uh, you're going to see Jesus sooner than you think. And you know what I say? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> Um, no, he wouldn't really do that, but he just, just being funny, just being Charlie, which is why people love him. <laughs> but anyway, so this scripture, this is probably one of the things that we love to hear the most is because we know that heaven is going to be our destination one day. And this scripture, these scriptures will tell us, let's read along together. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you may be awesome also. Isn't that amazing? You're not getting excited about that. Jesus is preparing a place for us. And we get to go there. That's awesome, right? You're not excited as I am about that. <laughs> well, maybe you are. Maybe you're just tired. I've been up here too long. You guys ready to say, okay, can we be done already? We're ready to go. No, just kidding. Okay. But anyway, I'm almost done. And hey, I think I'm going to beat pastor's time. <laughs> just kidding. Um, all right. So another thing is you have to understand is not everyone gets to go to heaven. Now, everybody is welcome Everybody has, has that option. Not everybody takes the option. But not everybody can go. And I've told the kids this. Kids, you can't go to heaven just because your mom is saved. You can't go to, you can't go to heaven just because you come to church. You can't go to heaven just because you give money. You can't go to heaven just because you help the poor. There is not one single thing on this earth that you can do to get you into heaven except by trusting in Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to the Father except through him. Jesus is the way, okay? And that's important for you guys to know because some people do believe that if they do enough good deeds and if they go to church and if they're nice and if they, if they give money to the poor and if they help people out and if they come to church and if, they, if, their parent, if they're from a lineage of people that have preached or taught or participated or been members of whatever church, that they're good. But that's not what the Bible says. So... Um, my question to you guys is, and you've been sitting for a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys to stand. My question to you today is a, a very similar question. You heard this question last night, those of you who were at B-Shop. But I want you to think about yourself right now, and I want you to think about if you, if this was your last day, on earth, if this was your last day that you were going to be on this earth, would you be ready to go to heaven? Would you be certain beyond the shadow of a doubt that heaven is where you're going? And think about that for a minute. That's a very important question. Because you know in the Bible it says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will we'll go to heaven. So there are people in churches that are not going to go to heaven. How sad. There are people in your family that aren't going to go to heaven. You better tell them. You better tell them about Jesus. You better hope that you can help them get to Jesus. There are people in your neighborhood that aren't going to go to heaven or aren't ready to go to heaven, let me put it that way. There are people at your work, there are people at your school, kids you're getting ready to start school, there's going to be kids in your classrooms, which I love, sometimes the kids will come to me and they'll be like, Miss Rhonda, my friend at, at school doesn't believe in Jesus, 
And I'm like, okay, let's pray. We're going to pray for that person. We're going to pray that God gives you the words as you boldly speak to them about Jesus so that they can come to know Jesus so they can make it to heaven. If you don't know for sure that heaven is where you would go today if you took your last breath, then today we need to get that right. Today we need to make it right. We need to be ready today. Okay, so with all eyes closed, heads bowed, just be honest with yourself and think about that. And now that you've thought about it, if you would be one that would say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I would go to heaven today. If you, with eyes closed, would be so bold to raise your hand. And then you can put your hand down. We are going to pray with you and for you so that you can be ready to meet Jesus whenever your time is to meet Jesus. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray together as a congregation so that the people who have raised their hands will feel more comfortable. Okay? You in? Let's pray. Repeat after me, please. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you came and died for us so we could have a way to be with you in heaven. Jesus, we acknowledge that we're a sinner and that we need a savior. We believe that you died but that you rose again and you are alive now and ready to welcome us into your family. We say with our mouth, you are Lord and we ask you to be our savior. And we pray this in Jesus name, amen. If you said that prayer and meant it from your heart, you are ready for heaven and you are part of God's family. Can we give a big hand of praise? So um, I appreciate you guys being such an attentive and wonderful audience. Um, I know it's hard when pastor's not here because you're used to hearing from pastor and I say things a little bit different and I'm a little all over the board sometimes, but I hope that you have gotten something out of today's message and I hope that you have gotten something out of UBS, your families. Um, and now for some final words of encouragement, I'd like to bring up Major McDaniel. <laughs> and he'll need that verse up on the screen, I think. Oh, it is? Oh, I don't think it's there yet. I was just letting you know. It's Second Timothy. Okay, I like to tell my students uh, that I teach you are between me and dinner, so let's get this done. And so right now I'm between you and, and cake and punch out there, so this will be uh, fairly quick. So for the Vacation Bible School students, you folks are fantastic. You are a fun, I went home, I told Pastor, I went home every evening and went straight to bed because they wore me out. <laughs> So, but for, for you Vacation Bible School students, remember, you have the victory. So if you follow God's marching orders like Joshua, and it doesn't matter how tall or short you are like David, or how many are with you like Gideon, you have the victory. 
So uh, one thing I was thinking of when I was sitting in the seat is um, when a team goes on the field or marching band goes onto the field for a competition, you kind of want all of those members to go out thinking, we got this, we're going to win. And you have this. The victory is already yours. So remember, um, Joshua, all they had to do was just walk around the city, and the walls fell down flat. And for David, he had to put some work into it because he had to at least sling, but he moved toward Goliath. He didn't back up from Goliath, so he knew he had the victory. And then um, for Gideon, they didn't have to do anything. God says, I got this battle for you. So there might be some battles we have to fight, and then there's going to be other battles. God's going to do all the work. But in all of it, we have the victory because God's with us. So uh, for the Vacation Bible School students, you remember how we learned, uh, so attention. So what do we do when we're doing attention? I, I can't do it. I've got my hands occupied. Um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which, is, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. So last thing. So you, uh, again, vacation Bible school students, you remember, um, oh, okay, I remember, say attention, and then present harms. Order arms. All right, thank you. Dismissed. <laughs> yeah, K join us for cake and punch in the lobby. Oh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll see you in the lobby. Have a good afternoon.